Hi, I'm Rebecca Finkel. Brittany Barrio. Jasmine Stakely. Cameron Reines. Ava Walker. And this is Silver Nanoparticles to Cure Yeast Infections. So what is a yeast infection? Well, it's the overgrowth of yeast cells in the vagina. It causes itching, swelling, and irritation. And while it's not lethal, it can be very uncomfortable. And if it's left untreated, it can spread to the fallopian tubes and in, long, in a long-term situation can cause fertility problems. So 75% of all women will get a yeast infection in their lifetime. And this risk increases for women who are pregnant, have diabetes, or are taking antibiotics. Women who are pregnant have a higher risk because they have higher estrogen levels. Um, women who have diabetes have a higher risk because there's an increase of sugar in the mucous membranes. And women who take antibiotics, the antibiotics can kill the bacteria that keeps the yeast balanced. So we want to propose a more effective and more safe yeast infection medication. So in our product, there is 0 0.02 moles of silver nanoparticles. Silver nanoparticles are a heat solution of sodium citrate and silver nitrate in water until the substance turns slightly yellow and both particles have dissolved. In this diagram over here, you can see we used in class, we would put it both, all three solutions into a beaker and heat it on a hot plate until it would turn slightly yellow. So we also added eight milliliters of yogurt and two milliliters of honey to create the cream form of our medication, as well as add probiotics to the medication to help the lactobacillus acidophilus help balance the yeast. So silver nanoparticles enter yeast cells through endocytosis. The, the citrate ions around the silver nitrate help disguise the so silver nanoparticles and help deceive the yeast into intaking it through endocytosis, which it usually does to intake sugar to survive. So this creates an effective way of killing the, so the yeast cells more fast. So our product will come with a cream-filled syringe and a panty liner. The um, application process is pretty simple. So as you can see, the user would, before bed, lay on their back and inject the cream into the vagina. Then they would remain on their back for two to three minutes. And during this time, they would be wearing a panty liner should any of the cream spill out. And afterwards, in the next, the next morning, they would wash it off. And if the infection persists, they would be advised to see a doctor. So why is our product better? Well, common products on the market can lead to um, stinging, swelling, irritation, tenderness, and itching. Our product is also better because women with yeast infection don't need a doctor's prescription to go and get the medication. It's on the shelf, and it has easy access to get to. Um, it's also more natural because of the yogurt and the, and the um, honey, which are home remedies, and it mixes with the silver nanoparticles to make the medication more effective. So it will take four to six years and four major steps to get our product on the market. The, for the first two months, we plan to develop and test the cream on yeast cultures grown in a laboratory. Then the next three to 12 months, we will begin toxicity lab on animals. And years two to three, we will, if the animal trials are successful, then we will apply for FDA approval and start phase, phase one and two, which are testing on people without yeast infections and then a small clinical trial of people with yeast infections. Finally, for year four to six, we will finish and establish phase three and four, which will be testing on pregnant diabetic women and people who take antibiotics in a larger scale to have statistics. Then uh, phase three and phase four, which are advertising and manufacturing and distribution. Thank you. Uh, so as far as the you know, curative rate for this solution over existing solutions, is there, a, what's the difference between your approach and current uh, treatments? 
Okay, so we looked at many other medications on the market right now, and most medica- medica- medications <laughs> take three days or seven days, depending on the effectiveness of the medication. Our medication is more of an overnight medication. It's more fast because of the silver nanoparticles, and we did test this in our own classroom where we grew- we had yeast, and we made the silver nanoparticles, and we tried to see if the silver nanoparticles would kill it. Then we would leave it overnight and see if we could revive it the next day. And if it would t- to revive, we would test again to see if the silver nanoparticles were still effective. So the next day we came back, we gave sugar to the yeast to see if it would revive itself, come back to life. But the silver nanoparticles wouldn't let it, so it just let it stay dead. <laughs> I think you might have been, I don't know if you mentioned the patent, uh, if you're going after a patent or this is a novel approach um, in terms of kind of the silver, uh, silver nanoparticle. In, is it novel? Is it is there something already available in the market that's being utilized in a different way or? Um, current yeast, uh, yeast infection medications don't use silver nanoparticles, so this would be a new method. And we all, we, uh, based on our testing, it did seem more effective. Obviously, we still have to go through all the tests we mentioned, but it is a new kind of medication. But is it being utilized in any other way? It's just a different, is this a different application of a existing technology? Um, no, nobody uses silver nanoparticles to treat yeast infections at the moment that we know of, but um, the whole point is that it pregnant women and diabetic women can use it and it can work because pregnant women can't usually, they have to go get a prescription to get yeast infection medication, that's kind of a hassle, whereas this you can just buy in the store. And production-wise, like, you guys have looked at production capability, manufacturing capability, is there a, a, a problem with yields, or is it how difficult is it to manufacture? I'm sorry. Sorry, is, is, there, is, there, is there any issues that you could foresee in manufacturing, in, at, in mass scale? Um, not, well, it will probably have not a very long shelf time because of the yogurt in it, and it will need to be refrigerated. Those are the main problems we have with manufacturing. But As for the silver nanoparticles, we were able to make that in our classroom, so that shows that it could be something that could be easily made. Yeah. So in terms of silver nanoparticle products, there are a lot of them. So there's Band-Aids and there's sports socks and all sorts of things that use silver nanoparticles to kill microbes in, in a different way. You know, whatever stinky sock microbes are, those are actually mostly, I don't know if those are bacteria or yeast, but the question is what patents exist for silver nanoparticle antimicrobials, or is it so common that it's not patentable and so it's an open area for you to develop into a new product. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to get back to you on that. Mm-hmm. Um, so the other question is, so the reason that pregnant women can't use the conventional medicines for yeast infections, most of them are over the counter, but they're just not recommended for pregnancy because they could be toxic to the baby. So. Are silver nanoparticles toxic to babies? Okay, so we looked at many researches and we found one that talked about the dosage being of silver nanoparticles. As long as there is less than 0.1 moles, silver nanoparticles are not found toxic to the human body. So that's why we have 0.02 moles to maximize the effectiveness of minimize toxicity to the human body, as well as the baby carrying it inside. All right, thank you guys.